Beta Ray Bill. He's a, he's a weird character. I mean, look at this guy's face. Mm -hmm. What even is that? It's like a Skeletor horse man thing. I don't know. You know the drill. We're going over the good, the bad, potential deck list, mechanics on how Beta Ray Bill works, then ultimately give you a recommendation on whether or not Beta Ray Bill is worth it in this installment of isn't worth it. Beta Ray Bill is a four energy, five power card that reads shuffle Stormbreaker into your deck. Stormbreaker reads double Beta Ray Bill's power. Uh, overall impressions of Beta Ray Bill. I like him. I'm excited for him. Not because of the card itself, but because what he brings to other decks and how he makes other cards better. Like he himself isn't super great. He's Thor, basically a uh, better or worse, depending how you look at it, Thor. But as I mentioned earlier, makes other cards better, specifically Jane Foster. She's literally twice as good now. And he makes Lockjaw decks better, or Jane Jaw, I guess, if you want to call them decks better. Because now they have a super awesome curve uh, with Thor on three, Beta on four, Jane on five, Odin on six. You can put all that stuff in a Lockjaw. Anyways, we'll get into more of that later. And also uh, with the Thor family, I guess, the Thor grouping of cards. Thor, Beta, Jane Foster, and Odin make up a nice little four card package little four card package that goes into any deck you kind of want to put it in now. Sort of like the Darkhawk package with um, Korg, Rockslide, Black Widow, and Darkhawk. Now the Thor people. But as Guardians, yeah, they go into decks. Let's talk mechanics. Not, not the mechanic profession, the mechanics of Beta Ray Bill. And this is really simple, as you can see by the screen here. Uh, basically, if you are wondering about anything about how Beta, Beta Ray Bill works, just look at Thor. How does Thor do it? Because that's what Beta Ray Bill does. They're literally the same card, except their power on the two cards are a little different. But yeah, if you have a question, I'm not going to sit here and answer all these different mechanics and inter interaction questions you might have. Just substitute Thor for Beta Ray Bill in your in your Google search. The only other thing to note is Stormbreaker shuffles the deck. And that matters with cards like Iron Lad and Jubilee. If you play a beta, it's going to shuffle everything up. So keep that in mind. All right, what are the good parts about Beta Ray Bill? Um, I've already mentioned this first one. It makes Jane Foster twice as good. Literally. With Thor and Jane Foster before, it was like, well, if you didn't draw one or the other, it was kind of awkward. They weren't really great by themselves. But now with Beta Ray Bill, uh, it almost guarantees that your Jane Foster is going to be doing something great in the game. And if you play both of them out before you play Jane Foster, well, now you're cooking. The second thing I also already mentioned, but it makes up that four card package. Four cards. That's eight. Four. Four cards. It's great. I mean, maybe it's not a good uh, little set of cards to put in a bunch of different decks, but I think it's cool and I'm definitely going to try it. So until it's proven to not be a good setup in random decks, I think that's a positive. Third thing. Third thing. Odin. Odin is now better because usually with Odin, you would have to run stuff like White Tiger and Doctor Doom and Wong and do all that not too great stuff to make Odin a decent inclusion in your deck. Well, now you could just run Odin as long as you have uh, Jane Foster, not Jane Foster, as long as you have Beta Ray Bill and Thor. Now Odin makes sense in that deck because re-triggering either of those is quite a bit of, it's a lot of power. And then the last thing is it fills the curve in Lockjaw. Now, why this is so good is because when you're playing Lockjaw decks, um, it kind of sucks when you don't have Lockjaw on turn three. Well, now with uh, Beta Ray Bill, it kind of doesn't matter if you don't have your Lockjaw on turn three, because you'll have Thor on turn three, Beta on turn four, uh, Jane on five, whatever you want to do on six. Or if you have Lockjaw on three, then it's great. Now you get to do stuff with your Lockjaw. I think that's what makes him great in Lockjaw decks. Not the fact that the Hammer or Stormbreaker can go into Lockjaw, which is a positive, but the fact that if you don't draw your Lockjaw, it's not a bad deck anymore. Now you can just still do stuff and still get really good power. All right, the bad side of Beta Ray Bill. You need Jane Foster. Now I put this, this is, I guess, more of a broad uh, thing is it's sort of like why Thor isn't that great or why Thor is not played that much. Because unless you have Jane Foster, Thor just is kind of, it's not good. It puts an extra card in your deck that you don't really want to draw. Uh, you want to use Jane Foster to draw it. So unless you have Jane Foster on turn five, Beta Ray Bill is just the same as Thor. Just sort of like, eh, okay, I guess. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. 
The next thing I will point out is he's not meta changing. Now, I am excited for Beta Ray Bill. I, it's not all flowers and sunshine with Beta Ray Bill. Um, he's not himself is not good enough. And I don't think the little four card package I'm talking about here is good enough either to actually warp the meta or change how the game is played or really make like a crazy huge impact on the metagame. You know, it, it's just a four cost Thor. It, yeah, it's just, it's not gonna shake every, anything up too much. Um, I'm just more so excited about what he does to other cards that already exist and other archetypes in the game that already exist. Hope that made sense. And the last bad part is he's 5k tokens. Now for a card that isn't the next blob or the next legion or whatever, 5k tokens is a lot. It's a downside. And here's the potential deck list I would use with Beta Ray Bill on the first day. Surprise, it's a Lockjaw deck. Um, but yeah, it's pretty typical here, except we're doing Forge and the one cost card because we're running Onan. I don't know, it's just cute. I don't need to explain Forge anymore. And then we have, yeah, Thor, Beta Ray Bill. We have Jubilee also on the four drop slot to help with the awkwardness of not drawing Lockjaw or maybe you don't draw Thor or Beta. You got Jubilee for that. And then uh, on the top end, we have Scar, She-Hulk, Magneto, Odin, and Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom's great because of Odin. If he comes out of Lockjaw early, fantastic. Uh, you can just Odin it, get some more power. We have Scar because if Scar gets, if if our Hammer and Stormbreaker stuff goes well, then Scar will be cheap, if not free. Um, then Magneto and She-Hulk because they're big things. Well, I just, I remembered why I put Forge in this deck because Beta Ray Bill doubles his power, so I thought it was kind of cute to put Forge in there as a one cost card. Anyways, that's the deck. All right, on to my recommendation for Beta Ray, Beta Ray Bill. Uh, this is the worst part about his release, in my opinion, is the spotlight cash. So for tokens, I would say he's worth it if you have the extra tokens and you are down for having another Thor and you just want to do all the stuff I've been talking about, then yeah, sure, 6k tokens, why not? Keep in mind, he's not going to change the meta like Blob is or anything. So the 6k tokens obviously isn't going to be as worth it as something like Blob or Legion or whatever it would be. Now, as far as spotlight caches go, this is where it gets awkward because it's basically, a lot of these come down to this. If you don't have one of the two other cards, then it's worth it. If you don't have Galactus, then it is worth it to open for Beta Ray Bill because you'll get Beta Ray, uh, you'll get Galactus, and uh, that's great. I think you can ignore Elsa. She's sort of useless in my opinion now, but if you have Galactus and you're not sure about Beta Ray Bill, I would wait. I would wait and see to see if he's as cool as he seems he's going to be. All right, that's it. That's my review. Just to summarize real quick, Beta Ray Bill is not a groundbreaking, super duper awesome card, but what he brings to the game and what he does for other cards is really interesting. And I think it's going to be, um, it's going to be cool. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the metagame and to see if Beta Ray Bill actually impacts these decks and this four little card package as much as I think he will. Thank you so much for watching. Um, oh yeah, check this out. I don't know if you like this design, but you grab this hoodie in uh, in the store in the description below. I want, didn't want to make merch. I wanted to make cool designs and clothes that people would want to wear, regardless of whether or not they know who I am. Um, and if you want to support me, that's a great way to do so. Members of the channel get 10% off. Like, subscribe, do all those things. Later on, nerds.